Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to go through some general purpose troubleshooting and the general flow of a circuit of a piece of medical equipment. Now, this is in theory the general flow of most every device that you're going to see. Of course, there's going to be some nuances, some changes here and there, but don't let that distract you. This is basically a flow to help you figure out your troubleshooting of what you got to do for this device. Now over here on the left, in the very bottom, you can see that I have the AC in. Now that's going to be your plug and your cord, and then following that, you're going to find some fuses. Usually, the fuses are going to be part of your IEC AC input module. The fuses could also be case mounted, as in a through panel fuse holder in the case. After that, you'll come to your EMI filter. Most devices have some sort of EMI filter. It could be built in to the AC input module, or it could be a silver box that you find inside the case. And following the EMI filter, that's where we go into a mains on off power switch. Now, not all devices have a mains power switch. Sometimes they just have a soft switch. But the one thing I want you to know is you notice that both the line and the neutral on my AC switch here are going to be switched because in medical equipment, they usually kill both the line and the neutral when you disconnect the power switch. Right after the AC power switch, the lines go to your DC power supply. Not every device runs completely off DC, but most medical equipment nowadays does power itself off DC because DC is more controllable, it's safer, there's less line interference to other devices, and it also isolates the patient and the device from AC mains. This is where you're going to switch your multimeter over to DC. From here on out, most of your troubleshooting, unless you're troubleshooting an AC motor that's inside a device, which is rare, you're going to be troubleshooting using DC. So remember that. From the DC power supply on, you're going to be using DC on your multimeter when you're troubleshooting. Now there's two types of voltages that are usually output by a DC power supply. You'll have your control voltage at 5 volts to 3 volts DC which is for your display and your LED indicators and stuff like that. And then you have your operating voltage, which is going to be your full power. That's the power that's going to be pushing your motors. It's going to be pushing your heating elements and stuff like that. It's going to be 12 to 24 volts, and that's your operating voltage. Now notice at the top of the control PCB, I have a battery. Most medical devices nowadays have some sort of internal battery and that's so that the device can continue treating the patient with a power interruption. And also take notice that in line to the battery, someplace, either on the control PCB or in the wire that actually goes to the battery, maybe even on the battery itself, you're going to find a battery fuse. That's because we can't have a battery go on full current in the event that there's some sort of short. The control PCB usually acts as a battery maintainer and battery charge circuit. So notice the battery is not usually connected to the DC power supply. It's usually connected to the control PCB, which monitors and maintains the battery. And at the very bottom of the control PCB, I want you guys to take notice that I have a on switch, which is a soft switch. That is the lit up button on the front of your device. You push the button and it magically turns on. That is a soft power switch. And what it is, is from the DC power supply, even though it's not turned on, there's a tiny little DC voltage that comes over to the control PCB. And that little signal goes to the power button. And when you depress the button, it sends a signal back to the DC power supply and tells, hey, turn everything on. From the control PCB, you'll find other attached devices, or it could be part of the control PCB. Things like your display controller, your heating and cooling controller, your motor controller slash motor driver, and then the various sensors and feedback to the user or the patient. And that guys, that is 90 plus percent of medical equipment in a nutshell. This general little flow of how power comes in, goes to the control PCB, 
it maintains the battery and it interacts with the various other parts of the device like your display controller, heating, motors, and your sensors. So use this little flowchart to help you when you are trying to figure out how to troubleshoot a device. In other words, let's say that you have a problem with a device not turning on. Very, very common problem. So let's say you check the AC. First you check the outlet, obviously, because believe it or not, in hospitals they often pop circuit breakers. So you check the outlet to make sure that it's got power. Okay, now you check to make sure that your power cord is not bad. Make sure it's plugged in correctly. And from there, you can go immediately inside the device and you start checking for your EMI filter because your EMI filter usually has really good access points that come out of it. And from the EMI filter, I would then probably check right at the DC power supply where the AC comes in. Because usually the power switch, the ON's main switch, is kind of a pain in the butt to get to. So I'm gonna check at the EMI filter, and then I'm gonna check at the DC power supply. Or if you're really hardy, you can just skip the EMI filter and all that garbage check straight to the DC power supply. First you wanna check and make sure that your AC made it all the way there. Next you're gonna check and make sure that your DC power supply has its voltages going out. Now how do you know what voltages are supposed to be coming out? Well, you can either look up the data sheet on the power supply, you should be able to find on the internet, or you can read the power supply itself. Usually they have a number indicating what line goes to what voltage. Next, what you gotta do is check the power on your battery. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of medical devices that actually run 100% off the battery, which means even if it's plugged in and charging, if it was completely down on the battery, it's got to sit there and it's got to charge for a little bit, kind of like your cell phone. Your cell phone is always running off the battery, so it has to charge up a little bit and then it will allow it to turn on. It does happen, so check your battery to make sure it's not fully depleted. And then from there, now you go in and you start checking fuses. One of the things you guys got to know though, is if a device pops a fuse, there's a reason. This isn't the 1960s and 1970s anymore. If a device pops a fuse, I guarantee it's got bigger problems. So as soon as you pop a replacement fuse in there, it's going to pop again. Maybe not now, maybe in a few minutes, maybe in an hour or two, but it will pop that fuse again because technically replacing a, a fuse is a band-aid fix. And remember what I always say, guys, a band-aid fix always comes back and that includes replacing fuses. The rest of the minutia of these circuits is gonna vary completely from machine to machine. This is just a rough layout of what to expect when you start looking at a schematic for a device, or if you don't have a schematic, when you're just opening up the case and taking a look on the inside, these are the things that you should expect to see. Your power line coming in, it's gonna have fuses someplace, an EMI filter, maybe a mains power switch, maybe not. You're gonna have usually a DC power supply, which could be a part of your control PCB. You never know. And you could have an on off switch that's a soft switch, which is basically just a signal. It doesn't actually disconnect the device from mains. A lot of devices have a battery. They have fuses in them, but don't think that a fuse is gonna fix your problem. You should have a display controller. If it's got any sort of readout whatsoever, if it's got a display that tells you text or draws pretty pictures, it's got a display controller of some sort. If it's got a heater, it's got a heating or cooling controller. And if you are turning on a motor, somehow you have a motor controller. And sensors, there are so many different types of sensors. That's a whole nother video. But guys, this is it. This is the flow for most medical devices that you run into. And just by using this flow and studying it, you'll get to be a very good troubleshooter, especially in the need when you're in the field and you gotta figure out why a device isn't turning on. Just kinda go through this really quickly in your head and you will be very successful. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you like this video. 
I try to make this as brief and as simple as possible because a lot of people just can't really picture the flow of how medical devices operate. And this is just one of those little tidbits that I'll bring to you on troubleshooting for beginners. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. I know I will.